So basically the idea is I can create a clone of myself. So the public agent represents my customer clients or friends. Let's ask what is my personal email address. And look at that. It says I'm not able to share my personal email address. I can share my public email address, which is support at the rednotogether.com. I created a family agent. It can use both the public and private level information. If I ask the same question, what is my personal email address? The family agent is able to output my personal email address. Now we can create use case such as make a digital clone of yourself and then let your friends, family, your customer or client chat with you when you are asleep or maybe doing some more important work all without any fear of your personal data breach. And that's what we are going to explore in this video. Hi, my name is Avijit. You are watching Know Together where I try to simplify latest tech and innovations for your future and your business. Let's get started. Welcome back. Since last year, there have been so many cool AI agent framework that have been rolled out in the internet. While all of them are trying to fix a certain problem, I think Microsoft Autogen framework was really mind blowing. Now, as I was exploring different agent options within Autogen framework, I started exploring the concept of teachable agents. So this video will have four sections as always. In the first section, we will set up a simple teachability use case using Autogen's official documentation. In the second section, we will take a close look at the underlying code and then discuss how it is working under the hood. In the third section, we will customize Autogen's teachable capability to create a digital clone of myself. And in the fourth and final section, we are going to discuss what are the various use cases that we can do with this agent or maybe combination of different multiple agents. Please note that this video will become too long and that is why I am going to upload this video into two parts. So in the part one, which is this part, I am going to explore the teachable agent concept and also going to look at the underlying code of the teachable agent to make you understand how it works. In the second part, we are going to focus into customizing the teachable agent to create a clone of myself or maybe similar business use case that you can build with it. So if you are someone who know Autogen framework and its agents in very much detail to the breadth of it, you can skip this video and instead subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get notified once the second part is uploaded. However, if you are someone who are new to the world of AI agent or Autogen framework, please continue to watch this video. With that said, let's proceed. So this is the article published by Microsoft Autogen team regarding the teachable agents. Now by the design, it's really simple. You have an user proxy agent. User proxy agent is nothing but an AI agent which kind of represents the user or maybe in this case yourself. You have a teachable agent. So teachable agent is nothing but it can be any conversable agent like any agent that you can do conversion with using a chat and you can add a teachability capability to the agent, make it a teachable agent. And now this teachable agent internally makes use of a text analyzer agent to make a certain decisions. For example, whether it needs to store certain information in vector database or it needs to pull certain information or from the vector database uh, and then respond to the user proxy or to the user. If you are new to the world of AI agents, I already have created a video about basics of AI agents. Please check out the video. It should be on your right top. Regarding the vector DB, we will discuss about it in the later section where we'll explore the code. So basically what they are saying in this documentation is that they have created an agent capability called teachability. With the teachability capability, you can actually empower your large language model based assistance with more sort of unlimited memory because it's going to reread the chat line by line and it will decide which one it needs to store and it will store it in the database for later retrieval. Now in the next section, we are going to create this teachability agent and run it and also explore the code that is, that is being talked here. So let's go and create our first simple teachability agent using this documentation. Okay, to start, I have come into my root project directory and we'll go into YouTube tutorials and we'll create a folder called teachable agents. So we are in the teachable agent folder. So the first thing that we have to do is to create a conda environment. I have created this environment already, but please for you, go ahead and create the Python environment and then we'll activate the environment. Next thing, we'll create our first teachable agent. So first teachable agent dot py so first thing that you have to do is to install pyautogen teachable module now i have already done that so i'm not going to do that but please go ahead and install the py pyautogen which is the autogen module along with the teachable agent support okay so first thing first we'll import autogen then we'll import the conversable agent and user proxy agent okay and then next we are going to import the agent capability 
called teachability we are going to create a file this file will contain all the large language model definitions so for me i'm going to use the local large language model for the first demo so that is why it's pointing to 8004 i'm going to call the model as demo but under the hood i'll probably run open chat model so for that what i'll do i'll first open wsl it's showing my olama is already running that means my locally hosted large language model is already running with olama if you really want to know how to run locally hosted large language models uh, you can check out my other video on olama i have already covered this in very much detail okay and next what i'll do we'll also open another git bash so this is where i will run my light llm api proxy so basically what will happen is this teachable agent will use the json file that is pointing to this base url but this base url will actually point to my light llm api proxy which will connect to my olama instance so the reason why i'm using light llm as i have already explained in my light llm video is to use an open ai specific standard so i'm going to create a config.yaml here and this config.yaml will have my light llm config so i am going to copy and paste one of my existing light llm config just to explain you how it is all set up so basically for gpt4 model what i'm going to do is connect to my olama uh, on 114 port using the open chat model i'm going to save it go to the other window and start my light llm server okay so my light llm is running on 8000 port uh, if you really want to know more about light llm i will also again attach the video in the right top you should go to see it i'm also planning to bring a more in-depth detail a production guide for light llm implementation so stay tuned for that one so next what we are going to do is define our config file so that's the config list.json and and probably we are going to use gpt41106 model again gpt41106 model is just the model name um, we are not going to call the open ai api we are using our local hosted large language model and just to see that we are able to fetch this model properly from the json file just going to run it and there you go you can see that uh gpt41106 model is able to load from the config file next we'll create our teachable agent so teachable agent is nothing but a conversable agent so next we are initiating the teachability module now we are going to do a lot more deep dive into the next section for each of the config just for now to note is we are setting the verbosity to three to see a lot more logging and we are also setting the dvdir uh, to be teachability dv so this is uh, basically going to create a chroma db instance and now we are adding the teachability ability to the teachable agent just as what the document described that we can instantiate the teachability object by calling the add to agent method now the next we are going to create a user proxy agent again user proxy agent as i said earlier is nothing but an agent that represents you or the user and we are keeping the human input mode as always that means we are going to do a chat with this uh, teachable agent through the user proxy agent and now the final step we are going to initiate the chat the teachable agent will do a chat with the user proxy agent and the first message the teachable agent is going to say is this and you can definitely customize them. right so our first teachable agent is ready and let's give it a test so we'll run python first teachable agent.py and there you go i started so i will just say hi my name is Vijit. and this is the response um now if you see it has created a teachability database it says it's a chroma sqlite 3 type database and it is using this as a vector database now why the vector database is used here is because the teachable agent will retrieve useful information that it receives from the chat it could be an information it could be an advice it could be an or any teachings that it can retrieve from the chat and it will store that information into this database for any future reference now because we have set the verbosity to be three that's why it is we can able to see what is exactly going step you know in the behind step by step teachable agent uses an internal text analyzer agent to do some analysis now what kind of analysis it is doing so when i said hi my name is Afijit, the, this information is being passed from the user proxy agent to the teachable agent that teachable agent is first it is checking whether any part of the text is to perform a task or solve a problem analyzer say no and then it say does does the text contain information that could be saved to memory then the analyzer say yes and then teachable agent gets the information and then it's basically saving the information you know as a question answer pair and so as this pair it is going to save this into the vector database now if i ask is what is my name it's it's able to pick up the detail from the memo which is from the vector database and it's just responding hello it's nice to see you again now just to test a little bit more complex example let's ask him what is orca so it says orca known as killer well rajas spaces on dolphin family of course it's probably fascinating or we probably didn't understand the context so what i'll do i will teach it that orca is a 13 billion parameter language model released by microsoft and now that it knows it i can now ask what is orca model now it has responded orca is an 
open reasoning chart architecture is a 13 billion language model developed by microsoft so that's fabulous right because now i have made it learn what is our model and it is able to get me the right answer so this is how you can actually use the teachable agent to teach your ai agent to do certain tasks now in the next section we are going to do a bit of deep dive and see the code internally how it is working so at this line the teachable agent is a conversable agent with this type of autogen provided agent you can actually do any kind of chat or conversation now whenever you see different type of autogen agents for example assistant agent rag proxy agent most of those agents are actually inherited from conversable agents so similarly we have a teachability so if you can see teachability is kind of an capability that you can add to any agent that is a subclass of conversable agent so that means you can also add teachability to an assistant agent or maybe to an rag user proxy agent or any other user proxy agent because all of these agents inherit the conversable agent class now if you go inside teachability uh, this is again inheriting the agent capability interface now it says that teachability uses vector database to give an agent the ability to remember user teaching so how it does it we will explore it now so basically it does an initiation it uses few of the parameters now most of them are optional as you can see however you can see the path to db directory is something that is already mentioned as default so that means if we would have not specified this path to db directory uh, it would have created the vector database into this path now once it is initialized next thing that we need to look at is the add to agent method now what add to agent method does is it basically updates the conversable agent to be the teachable agent and then it register a hook for the a process last message function from the conversable agent so that means inherently whenever you add teachability to an agent it will always try to process its last message and try to analyze it to get information from it to store into the vector database now this will take a lot of time if i go line by line and explain the code so it would be better if i focus on the core concepts that you really need to know this is one of the important config where it initiates a text analyzer agent so when you have seen this diagram before you have seen that the teachable agent uses the text analyzer agent internally so this is where it initialize that text analyzer agent again text analyzer agent is something that is provided by the autogen framework and then it updates the system message that so basically your conversable agent that you are using may have its own system message what it is doing is basically it's amending this system message so that your agent knows that it has some user teaching that it can retrieve from the vector database using the teachable module if that all makes sense to you now the teachability have a couple of methods uh, like process last message as you can see so what is happening here is basically this process last message method is really a definition defined in your conversable agent but when you add the teachability into it the teachable module is basically is basically overriding the process last message definition to make sure it fetch context from the vector database now this is a very interesting function because you see the process last message method is actually calling the consider memo storage function and consider memo retrieval function so these two functions are really really interesting to understand so consider memo storage is where the teachable agent will decide whether to store any information into the vector database based on the last chat message how it does so will be very much clear to you when you see the logs when i asked what is an orca model what it did was this teachable agent has asked the analyzer does any part of the text is to perform a task or solve a problem as you can see this is the exact thing that is being written here so basically it is analyzing using the text analyzer agent whether the last message in the chat is asking the agent to perform a task or solve a problem if the answer is yes then next it analyzes that copy any advice from the text that may be useful for a similar but different task in the future so that means it tries to think it through whether the advice that has been provided here is something that can be used in the future or not and if no advice is present then it will just return none it says if it is not none that means it is an advice then it will fetch the advice or the task so it's just taking the copy just the task from the text once it has got the advice and the task then what it is doing is going to create a task advice pair and it's going to save the task advice pair into the memory store similarly if the last chat is not an advice or a task it will still check whether there is any text that contains an information that should be committed into the memory and if the analyzer agent think that yes there is some information then it will fetch that information from there and then it will analyze that information and create a potential question which can be used to fetch this answer if you see the steps that imagine that the user has forgot this information in the text how would they ask you for this information and then it, in this step it will create a question and in the last step it is basically saving that question answer pair into the database and that is how for each and every line of communication it is analyzing for any information that it should save for the future and that is how it is keeping relevant information into the vector store and this is really intelligent way because if you dump a whole pdf file into a vector store that is not really a good way to use of your vector store because when you do the similarity search you can have less relevant information but now when you are 
storing information in a question answer pair or task advice pair then you have much more possibility of having relevant information fetched when you are doing the query at the later stage similarly it has a consider memo retrieval so if you see the process last message first thing it is doing it is trying to check whether any context that needs to be added into its memory now if you see the consider memo retrieval it just it says decides whether to retrieve memos from the db and add them to the chat context and how it is doing so it's saying does any part of the text ask agent to perform a task or solve a problem very similar to last one if the answer is yes then it will only search the task advice pair and then it is basically adding that memo contact with the comment and this becomes the context for the agent to respond to the question then returns it here as an expanded text and then it uses the expanded text to actually process the last message now that we have seen the teachability code let's go and check how the text analyzer agent is working basically the text analyzer agent is again a child or a subclass of conversable agent now text analyzer agent has its own system context what it basically says that you are expert in text analysis the user will give they give you text to analyze and you will be also given instruction on how to analyze the text so that means basically where in this text this, this uh, teachability agent is passing the text and as well as the instruction on how to analyze the text and the text analyzer reads that and analyzes it so in the next step what we are going to do we are going to create our own custom teachability method for our own use case and then we'll show you how you can use the same methodology to create your own business use case outside of my notice this video has already become 16 minutes long so i'm going to stop it here so you can grasp this concept maybe go over through the video once again and i am going to bring the second part of the video very soon probably right after this video where you can see how we have created the customized teachable agent to make a clone of myself so stay tuned subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one bye